Optimization problems that have a linear objective and linear equations are in all parts of engineering, business, math, and science, and uh, especially data science and machine learning. So we're going to cover uh, linear programming, how to set up and solve that in Python with Python uh, Gecko and also SciPy. There are also other good packages for linear programming as well, such as Pulp and others in Python. So if you want to follow along with the source code here, there's the link and it'll bring up this web page that shows this information and you can get the source code and other information. Okay, so we have a linear programming problem. Here's a mathematical statement of that. Let me review this. We have, uh, we can minimize or maximize a certain quantity. This is going to be a C matrix. I'm going to write my C matrix like this, where I'm going to have C1, uh, C2, and C3, and so on. And then I'm going to have my X values. So I'm going to have X1, X2, X3, or you could have zero indices with Python. C0, C1, C2, X0, X1, X2. X2. Okay, and then we have subject to. These are going to be our equality constraints and then our inequality constraints. And A and B matrices are going to be uh, likely different uh, between those two. Sometimes we only have inequality constraints or equality, or sometimes we have both. Okay, so there's many different methods to solve these. Uh, we know that for linear programming problems, we're always going to be at the intersection of constraints. So let's say we have to be on this side of the constraints. We have some inequalities that are pushing us to the middle. We know that the solution is going to be the intersection of one of these. So a simplex method is just going to visit all of the vertices in an intelligent way. Uh, to find the optimal solution, or there's the interior point methods as well. Let's go over a simple problem here. We're going to set that up and solve it in Python. We have two ingredients, A and B, that can produce products 1 and 2. The available supply of A is 30, and the available supply of B is 44. And it takes three units of A and eight units of B to produce product one. And then six units of A and four units of B to produce product two. There's at most five units of product one and four units of product two that we can make. And product one can be sold for 100, product two can be sold for 125, so it's more valuable. The objective here is to maximize the profit for this production problem. So let's look at the contraplot and answer some of these questions. So here's the contour plot of all of the solutions. We have, you know, first of all, that we've got to make more than zero. We can't make negative one of any of those products. So we have product one right here and product two. And then the green lines, those are our objective values. So as we make more of each of them, we can sell it for more. And you have one of them that's worth more than the other. Okay, product two is worth more. Um, so we want to favor product two, but there might be a mix just because we have a limited supply of A and B, and um, also a limited amount that we can make of each of them. So we can only make four units of product two and five units of product one. So that bounds us within this box right here in terms of the minimum and maximum that we can produce. And we also have other constraints, which is limited supply of our ingredients. So the very first one is that we have less than or equal to 30, and that was uh, most 30 units of A and 44 units of B. So this is our B constraint right here, and this is our A constraint. We just have limited quantities of the raw products that can produce 
those products. So we're going to be somewhere inside the region that um, is right here. So if I shaded this, this would be our feasible region. So any of those points would work as a potential solution. So we want to select the one that gives us the highest objective value. So if we look, we'll see that we are going right here for the highest value. And that's going to be 4 and 3 units of product 1 and product 2, respectively. OK, and if we wanted to minimize, minimize the profit for whatever reason, you can see that the minimum is going to be down here. Again, those are at the intersection of two constraints. And that'll be the case for any linear programming problem. Okay, let's set this up and solve it in Python, though. All right, so in Python, we have, let's, um, I'm going to start with uh, Gecko, import Gecko. And I'm going to have my first, which is product one, second, which is product two. And then I'm going to have a maximize function. And then the units of A, I have an inequality constraint to keep it below 30 and then 44. So I'll have a lower bound of 0 for product 1 and an upper bound of 5, lower bound of 0 for product 2, and upper bound of 4. And then I want to maximize what I make from the production. So x1 is the production of 1, x2 is the production of 2. And so I just multiply it by how much I can sell each one of those units for. And then to make product 1, it takes 3 units of A and 6 uh, to make product 2, it takes 6 units of A. And so that's going to be less than or equal to 30. So depending on what I do for product 1 and 2, I'm going to consume much more for product 2, even though it's a more valuable product. I only have 30, so I've got to consider that in terms of how many I select. Then I have 8 units of B to make product 1, and 4 units of B to make product 2. That's going to be less than or equal to 44. Then I'm going to solve it. If I put remote equals false, that solves it locally. And if I put display equals false, then it doesn't show the solver output. It condenses it just a little bit more. <clears throat> OK, and I can choose what I display. Here's product 1. I'm going to use x1.value0. And then this one's going to be product 2. And then I'll print product 1, product 2, and the profit. I put these as strings, and then I'll put in the profit. All right, now this one's ready to run. And then we'll solve a couple others as well with SciPy and doing this with matrices as well. So if I come here to uh, this program and I'll run it, you can run it in any Python environment once you install Gecko with pip install Gecko. And it's going to run it. And there is my profit, 775. And it says I make 3 of product 2 and 4 of product 1, which we also saw from the contour plot. All right, now uh, it's OK to write out problems that have you know, just a couple equations or a couple variables. You can write those out like we showed. But when you have a large scale problem, you may want to express it as matrices. And so with SciPy, we're going to import SciPy optimize linprog, or lin programming, uh, linear uh, programming. And then we're going to have our C, A, and B matrices. Now these come from the ones that we saw. Let me scroll up just a little bit. From this problem statement, we have the C, A, and B. And we can choose, we have different inputs for the inequality or the equality uh, constraints. Okay, so I'm just going to fill in the C, A, and B. And I have to put in negative 100 and negative 125 because the linprog is going to try to minimize. So I can convert it to a maximized problem just by multiplying those coefficients by negative 1. And then I have 3 and 6 and 8 and 4. 
and then I have 30 and 44. So let me write those out where they came from in terms of our constraints. Okay, so um, let's see, I'll move this over here and let's just go ahead and write these out so we can see it just a little bit better where those came from. I had the, the objective function, which, all right, I'll put this over here. My objective function was right here, and I'm just putting it into matrix form now. All right, so matrix form says that this is going to be uh, 100, comma, 125, all right, times, and then this is going to be x1, x2. Okay, so we have our C matrix uh, right here. All right, and then our A matrix is just going to be 3, 6, 8, 4, and that's times x1 and x2, and that's going to be less than, uh, and then we have 30 and 44. Okay. So there's our A matrix is right here. And then our B matrix or B vector is right here. All right, let's continue on with SciPy now. So I'll have some bounds. And I'm going to set those up for X1 uh, and X2 or X0 and X1, uh, 0 to 5 and 0 to 4. And then I'm going to use my linprog to solve this with SciPy. And I'll have C and then AUB, which is the, um, the inequalities, and BUB, which is the inequality as well. And then I'll set bounds equal to X0 bounds and X1 bounds. Okay, make that just a little bit wider. All right, and then I'll have options as well, and I'll say display true. And then we'll print the result, and then we can solve that with SciPy. Okay, so here goes SciPy now. Should give us the same solution, but you're going to see that the objective function is going to be negative of what we had before because it's going to be minimizing this instead of maximizing. So there you can see the products is 4 and 3. And there's the objective function. It said negative 775, but it really is because we had converted it to a minimization problem. So you just need to convert it back to maximization by multiplying by negative 1. All right, let's go on to another way of doing this. We can also do this with Gecko with matrices. I'm going to go a little bit faster through this because we've already explained it. There's your C, A, and B matrices. But instead of writing out as equations, we can use the quadratic objective just with the C term, not the full quadratic. Quadratic includes a linear term plus the quadratic term. I'm just going to include the linear term here. And then I have an AXB function as well. And instead of producing the X, I'm going to insert the X into this one because it's already created on line 6. Those are my variables from line 6. And then my equation type is a less than. It can be greater than or equal to as well. And then I'm going to have my lower and upper bounds for x0 and x1. And then I'll select solver 1. And I'll display the solver output. And then my product 1, product 2. And in this case, I have objective function value. I'm going to display the, the resulting objective function value from Gecko. Okay, let's run this one now. Here's the one with the matrices. And we'll just see if this returns uh, the same solution. Okay, so it shows the solver output right here. But the thing that we're interested in is product 1, product 2, and the objective function value. Let's do one more now. Now, for a really large scale systems, you may insert not a matrix, but a sparse matrix, where it gives the rows and columns 
of all the non-zero elements, and we can do that in Gecko as well. So I'm just going to do the row indices, the column indices, and then the values. And let's put that over here just so we can see uh, some of these. Okay, we have the A sparse matrix, and then I have one, one, okay, that's row one, row one, and then call, uh, row two, row two. Okay, now the column indices are gonna be column one, column two, column one, column two. Okay, so these are the row indices, the column indices of all the non-zero values, and then the values themselves. Okay, now in this case, it doesn't make sense to use a sparse matrix because it's a dense matrix, but many linear programming problems have very large scale and sparse matrices where it's much more efficient to store them by their indices and just the non-zero values instead of all of the values. Okay, B sparse are just gonna be the row indices and the values, and that's just gonna be one comma two, and then 30 comma 44. Now you're probably wondering, why didn't this start with zero instead of one? And that's because the underlying AP monitor package that solves these is one index based instead of zero index based. Here we have our X, and now we have AXB. I'm gonna put in A sparse, B sparse. The equation type is less than, and I'll just say that sparse equals true. In this case, I created x with my axb model, not with my objective function model. So now below, when I describe my c sparse, this is going to be row indices and values, 1 and 2, and then the values on 100 and 125. When I create my quadratic objective function, I have c sparse, and then I use the x values from above. And this is going to be a maximization problem, and it's going to be sparse. And I'll put in the lower and upper values and then solve it. Okay, and I want to print the objective function value and I'll print my x values. All right, let's solve this one again. Okay, here's the sparse. And for very large scale systems, sparse is going to run even faster. Okay, and you can see the solver output that was with IPOPT. And there you can see the results similar to what we had before. Okay, so we've shown four different ways of solving this. We showed it with Gecko, just writing out the equations. We have the SciPy. And then we did it with matrices in Gecko and then sparse matrices in Gecko. Okay, so this was an exercise in a very simple soft drink production problem. And we use a solver many different ways, uh, a couple different ways to solve this. Um, there is Gecko, as I mentioned. There's also Python Pulp and other packages that are out there in Python to solve linear programming problems, even for very large scale systems.